The following is tape number eight on the Nectar of Devotion series, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded between October 20th and November 14th, 1972, in Vrindavan, India. Bhakti begins when is one is actually liberated from the influence of the modes of material nature. That is real bhakti. Uh, otherwise, when you are, we are in training, that is called prakita bhakti. Actually, we are in the material state, but we are being trained now. The deity or uh, this is following the rules and regulations under the instruction of spiritual master, or Vedic injunction, this is training period. Uh, but even in this training period, if one is sincere and serious, he is liberated. Uh, he is liberated. It is so nice. Krishna consciousness is so nice that even in the training period, uh, although he is not mature, uh, and even one falls immature state, there is no loss. Uh, that is also confirmed by Narad Muni. Tattva sadharmam charanam bhujam bhari patit tato jati apakka. There is a verse like this. I don't exactly remember. That if one is engaged in Krishna consciousness and uh, without being mature, somehow or other, if he falls down, there is no loss. Whereas other persons were sticking to their sadharma, but has no idea of Krishna consciousness, he does not gain anything. These are the statements of Nara. Therefore, our position should be, our real active life begins when we uh, begin to serve Krishna with our senses without being designated without being situated in designation. Uh, this is transcendental state. Uh, therefore, uh, a bhakta, Vaishnava, Vaishnava should not be considered that he is coming from European group or this group or that group. No. Vaishnava jati buddhi. Vaishnava should not be considered belonging to any jāti. Vaishnavi vācce silādhi guruzu naramati. It's like we worship jīti. Everyone knows that jīti is made of stone, but do we worship the stone? Do we construct so big, big temples for worshipping a piece of stone? No. Unless one has got this conception that here is the Supreme Personality of God is Sakshat Brajandan or not. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw Jagannath temple and immediately fainted, he saw the Sakshat Brajandan or Hari Krishna immediately. So we have to learn how to see Vaishnava and Vishnu. That is Krishna consciousness moment. That means we have to purify our senses uh, then. Uh, we can see Krishna uh, always. Premanyana Charita Bhakti Vilo Chanena Santa Sadaiva Ridayeshu Vilo Kayant Jang Shama Sandaram Achinta Gunasta Rupa Govindam Adi Purusam Tamahang Bajan. Uh, one has to uh, smear the eyes with the ointment of love. How to love Krishna? Then one can see Krishna always within his heart. And one who has learned this art, how to see Krishna within himself, within his heart, always. Uh, Krishna certifies he is the topmost yogi. Yogi nāmapi sarvesa. Madhgata antarātmana sadhyāvān bhajati yomāṁ same jiktata. These are clear things. There is no hazy idea. Everything is clear. We have to become designationless, free from designation. We shall forget. Uh, 
Not that here are some foreigners pick up some quarrel with them and try to drive them away why they have come. So many uh, nonsense things are going on. For want of actual spiritual education, uh, this is not good, at least for Vrindavan. Uh, this is not good. Uh, people uh, have not been educated properly with the Vrindavan spirit. Uh, therefore, things are happening like that. Sarvapādhi vinimukta. Uh, how to engage the senses, uh, being free from designation in the service of the law. That is Vrindavan life. That is Vrindavan atmosphere. If there is any other purpose than this, then it is very difficult to utilize the opportunity, the fortune of living in Vrindavan. One has to be designationless. Gone. As belonging to a certain family, a certain society, or a certain person, he is said to be covered with designation. <laughs> when one is fully aware that he does not belong to any family, society, or country, but is eternally related to Krishna, he then realizes that his energy should be employed not in the interests of so-called family, society, or country, but in the interests of Krishna. This, this is purity of purpose and the platform of pure devotional service in Krishna Consciousness. Yeah. So, our purpose, the Krishna Consciousness movement is started with this summary idea uh, that nobody should think himself as belonging to certain family or sect or religion or country or nation. All these designations have created havoc in the world. It's false designation. Uh, when I think that this country is mine, it is a false designation. This country is not mine. I am a guest here. If I stay in a country, in a place, for say twenty years, fifty years, hundred years, does, does it mean that it belongs to me? Because they have no Krishna conscious idea, they are misled in thinking in that way. Uh, some group of men are thinking, that this is our country, we are American, we are Indian, we are German. Uh, this is uh, the false illusion. Actually everything belongs to Krishna. Krishna says, Bhoktam, Jagadabhasam, Sarvalokum Vaisalam. He is the prophet. Uh, but because people are not educated in Krishna consciousness, they are thinking, I am the prophet. Ahangma meti, janasso mohoyam, this ahangamama, increasing the ahangamama, is illusion, is maya. And that is going on. Therefore, there is great need of spreading Krishna consciousness in the human society. Those who are actually welfare workers, they should come forward and join this movement to spread it. Actually it is being accepted very nicely. Uh, Although ni not nicely, they have begun to accept it all over the world. That is our experience. And if we present the philosophy in correct viewpoint, people will accept it. And people from all parts of the world will come to Vrindavan uh, because they are hearing about Vrindavan, about Krishna naturally. They are uh, very much anxious to visit. But if we do not receive them nicely, if we remain sectarian, uh, it will be an unfortunate thing. Uh, that is my request. Those who are uh, inhabitants of Vrindava, they should be prepared to receive these foreigners who are being educated in Krishna consciousness. Uh, they should come here to visit. So they should be received, they should be welcome. Uh, that is my request. Yeah. Next. The characteristics of pure devotional service. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, twenty-ninth chapter, tenth verse, Srila Kapila Deva, while instructing his mother, has given the following characteristics of pure devotional service. Quote, My dear mother, those who are my pure devotees 
and who have no desire for material benefit or philosophical speculation have their minds so much engaged in my service that they are never interested in asking me for anything except to be engaged in that service. They do not even beg to live in my abode with me. Yeah. This is pure uh, devotional purpose. Uh, natural. Uh, here is a Krishna devotee. How much one should be glad to see a Krishna devotee. Uh, naturally, his love for a Krishna devotee should enhance. Uh, that is pure devotion. Uh, just like in foreign country, uh, when one Indian meets another Indian, naturally he has got some tendency. Oh, where from you are coming? How long you are here? This conversation go on. Uh, similarly, uh, natural flow of Krishna consciousness is that as soon as one sees a person in Vaishnava symptoms, he should be eager to welcome him. He should be very much anxious to talk with him about Krishna, Krishna katha. Bodhantam uh, parasparam uh, dushanti cha ramanti. Krishna conscious people should be so nice that as soon as they meet together, they talk about Krishna, they try to understand about Krishna, and they feel pleasure in that way. Uh, that is Krishna consciousness society. Uh, we are trying to make a Krishna consciousness society to give this opportunity to these people how one should be engladdened by seeing one devotee and talk with them, one another, about Krishna, forgetting their designation. That is Krishna Khan. There are five kinds of liberation, namely to become one with the Lord, to live with the Supreme Lord in the same planet, to have the same features as the Lord, to enjoy the same opulences as the Lord, and to live as a companion of the Lord. A devotee, not to speak of rejecting material sense gratification, does not even want any of the five kinds of liberation. He is satisfied simply by discharging loving service to the Lord. That is the characteristic of pure devotion. Yes. This is instructed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He uh, rejects na dhanang na janang na sundaring kavitang va jagadi sakang. Uh, they come they want all these things, uh, not dhanam, uh, great riches, and uh, beautiful wife, great followers. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is rejecting this. And he is rejecting also uh, liberation. Vyamanam na grindan. A pure devotee is not interested even in liberation. That is pure devotee. Uh, that, that like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says, Kita janma ho jathatva dasa bohin mok brahma janme nahi moro asa. A devotee does not pray that give me this, give me that, give me that. No. He prays that whatever you like, if you like me to take birth as an insect, that's all right. But my only request is that I may become an insect in the house of a devote, so that I may get the chance of prosecuting my devotional service. I may eat the eminence of foodstuff uh, eaten by the devotee, just like Bharat Maharaj, he became a deer, but he was associating with saintly person. He, he understood that I was formerly King Bharat, by chance my mind being absorbed in the thinking of a deer, I have become a deer. All right, doesn't matter. So he was associating with devotees. Similarly, a devotee is not interested uh, to become liberated, go back to home, back to Godhead. Uh, of course, even if he is not interested, Krishna takes him. Sakta de punat janma naiti mameti. That is natural. But that is not our. We don't pray 
to Krishna for anything, our sense gratification. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Deva therefore says, Mama Janmani Janmani Ishare Bhavata Bhakti Rahui Tuki Tuki. Ohui Tuki. Aprati Hata. Our simple, simple desire is how to be engaged in the service of the Lord. Janmani Janmani. When, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks Janmani Janmani, that means he rejects liberation only. Nadhalangna Janangna. Kapitang Bajate, this is the Kurmi Janit, and even the liberation, he, he rejects liberation. Mama Janmani, if one is liberated, then why is the question of Janmani Janit? Uh, so, liberation is also not aspired by a devotee. These are the characteristics of pure devotion. This chapter is uh, characteristics of pure devotional service. Uh, pure devotional service should be. Uh, without any visa. Anna vilasita sunnam. The others they are make, trying to make Krishna sunnam, sunnavadi. Uh, our attempt should be to make our desire sunnam. Uh, uh, simply we be engaged in the service of the law. That is pure devotion. Mm. In the above statement by Kapila Deva from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the actual position of a pure devotee is described, and the primary characteristics of devotional service are also defined. Further characteristics of devotional service are described by Rupa Goswami with evidences from different scriptures. He states that there are six characteristics of pure devotional service, which are as follows. One, pure devotional service brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. Mm -hmm. Two, pure devotional service is the beginning of all auspiciousness. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati has described Vishyang Purnam Sukhaya Vidhimayandra Adishya Kitaya uh, when actually one comes in the platform of devotion and service, for him there is no problem. The whole world is uh, disturbed, agitated with so many problems. Uh, but for a devotee there is no problem. Vishyam Purnam Sukhaya. And they are trying, the whole world is trying to become very big man. Somebody is trying to be a very big merchant or big industrialist or minister or this or that. And others, they are trying to occupy the post of Indra, Chandra, Devata. That is competition going on. Uh, as soon as there is some competition, even uh, uh, persons, demigods like Indra, Chandra, they become disturbed and they try to stop it. Uh, but a devotee has no such concern. He is not disturbed. Uh, because he is engaged in the service of the Lord, uh, he feels so much happy that he has no disturbance. Vishyam Purnam Sukhas. Neither he is anxious to occupy any very big post. Because for a devotee, Vidhi Mahendra Adishya He knows so what is this position? Uh, say for some years, uh, ten years, twenty years, fifty years, hundred years, million years, so it is limited. As soon as the uh, limited span of life is finished, either in this world, either in this planet, or in other planet, uh, suppose I go to the heavenly planet, I occupy the post of Indra, so what is that? It is also limited. Kine punne puno matalu kang visanti. So long uh, you have got assets of pious activities, you can occupy such posts. Uh, then again come down. Abrahma bhavana lokan punaravati narjana. So in this way we are wandering uh, from up, down, uh, down, up in this way. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore says, Eirupe Brahmanda Bhamite Kono Bhagavan Ji 
गुरु कृष्ण कृपा पाए भक्ति लता बी वी आर वॉन्डरिंग लाइफ ऑफ द लाइफ इन डिफरेंट स्पीसीज ऑफ लाइफ डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ लाइफ इन डिफरेंट प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम एंड दैट इज गोइंग ऑन दिस इज नॉट प्रोग्रेस वेर इज प्रोग्रेस यू आर कॉन्डिशन विद इन दिस यूनिवर्स वेर इज योर प्रोग्रेस सपोज यू जस्ट लाइक इफ आई जम्प विद ए लिमिटेड स्पेस वेर इज माई प्रोग्रेस रियल प्रोग्रेस इज कृष्ण कॉन्सियस ने तत्ता देहंग पुनर्जन्म नहीं थी If we actually want to make progress, then we must take to Krishna consciousness, so that after leaving this body, there is no more coming down to accept a material body. That is real progress. Otherwise, there is no progress. It is simply wandering with a limited space. That is not progress at all. But because we are in illusion, we are thinking it is progress. It is not progress. Thank you very much. Very good. Your devotional service is rarely achieved. Five. Those in your devotional service. Page number. Five, page number. Ah, uh, page two. Those in your devotional service deride even the conceptions. Your devotional service is the only means to attract Krishna. Krishna is all attractive, but your devotional service attracts even him. This means that your devotional service. Is even transcendentally stronger than Krishna himself, because it is Krishna's internal potency. So, six advantages. These are the immediate result of taking to Krishna consciousness. Pure devotional service. brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress there is a song of bhakti mein thako manas deho geho jo kichu moro otpino tua pade nanda kishor the purport of this song is when we surrender to krishna prane rakhe dhya vacha then we get relief from all kinds of anxiety this is very simple to understand everyone is in the material world here everyone is full of anxiety that is the nature of material existence one after another problems so if somebody says as sure that you just depend on me i take charge of all your problems how much relief you will feel just imagine so a ordinary man if some ordinary human being says a friend that don't worry Uh, I shall take charge of your all affairs. Don't worry. So we may doubt an ordinary man because we know the capacity of an ordinary man. <coughs> But when Krishna says that I take charge of you, then how much relief you should feel? Krishna is not ordinary man. Krishna is all powerful, the supreme personality of Godhead. He is Jogeshara. Uh, he is the absolute truth. So when he assures that I take charge of you, Ang Pa Sarva Papi Bhama Kushami gives assurance that I shall get you uh, liberated, delivered from the reaction of all sinful activities. We suffer due to our sinful activities. Uh, that is the general meaning of suffering. For past activities, we enjoy. But in this material world, either we enjoy or suffer. The common factor is suffering. Suppose if for my past activities. 
I get good birth, Janmai Sadya Sutta Sri. By pious activities we get birth in good family, uh, Janma, Aishadya, we get sufficient riches, wealthy family, wealthy parents, Janma Aishadya Sutta, good education, and Sri, beauty. These are the results of pious activities. But to take birth in the family of a king or very rich man, the sufferings of taking birth is the same. As the poor man suffers within the womb of his mother, similarly the rich man also suffers within the womb of his mother. The sufferings of taking birth is equal to the poor man and rich man. There is no difference. When there is disease, fever, it is not, it is less painful to the rich man and uh, very painful to the poor man. The pain is the same. So actually, so long there is material existence, the so-called suffering and enjoying, they are on the same level, there is no difference. Uh, but if we take to Krishna consciousness, as Krishna shows, ahaṅkvā sarva pāpi bhamokhaśyāmi, I shall get you released, released from all kinds of sinful activities. And that is real auspicious. Means when Krishna takes charge, He gradually educates the devotee, buddhi-yogam, in devotional service, so that he may go back home, back to God at Krishna. That is real auspicity. In the material world, so-called auspicity, to become very rich, to become very educated, to become very beautiful, uh, high parentage, they are also in material consideration, their aus auspicity, undoubtedly. But uh, they are also adulterated with so many sufferings, threefold miseries, adhātika, adi-bhauti, adi So actually uh, such position is not auspicity. Real auspicity is go back to home, back to God. Therefore it is said pure devotional service. Pure devotional service means without any material motive, annaya milāsitā sunnam jñāna karmādana ābhita. So pure devotional service is the beginning of all auspiciousness. All auspiciousness means go back to home, back to God. So if you stick to pure devotional service, follow the rules and regulations, chant sixteen rounds, to be engaged always in the service of the Lord, then uh, ultimate gain is that takkādi haṅpunar janmanaiti māmiti kham. Pure devotional service automatically puts one in transcendental pleasure. Uh, the transcendental pleasure and material pleasure. There is difference. Material pleasure means sense gratification, and transcendental pleasure means satisfaction of Krishna. A devotee is satisfied seeing Krishna is pleased. That is the satisfaction through Krishna. Uh, material pleasure means uh, direct sense perception, and spiritual pleasure means. Uh, by, uh, through Krishna, if Krishna is satisfied, then the devotee is satisfied. Mm. Just like a tree, the leaves and twigs become satisfied through the root of the tree. So Krishna is the root. Krishna is the origin of everything. Aham sarvasya prabhava, matta sarvam pravartati. 
So transcendental pleasure means uh, um, feeling of pleasure through Krishna. Just as the gopis and Krishna. Gopi, uh, when they saw Krishna is pleased, they became happy. And Krishna, when he saw that the gopis are happy, he became happier. Again the gopis see that Krishna is happier, they again they become more happy. In this way there is competition of happiness. Uh, the gopis see Krishna happier, they feel happiness. And Krishna sees gopis happier, Krishna feels happiness. This word is described in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Duye lage hura huri. This is spiritual competition. Uh, so, pure devotion and service automatically puts one in transcendental place. Uh, in the material pleasure, if I see you happy, I am unhappy. If I see you unhappy, I become happy. This is nature. I may say otherwise, but material nature is, if one is put into difficulty, then I become very happy. Uh, and if I am happy, others become envious. This is material place. Uh, whereas spiritual pleasure means that when one sees Krishna is happy, the devotee is happy, the other devotee becomes happier. That is spiritual place. In the spiritual world there is competition, but when one is advanced, the competitor becomes happy. So oh, he is so advanced, I could not do so. There is no enviousness. In the material world, if one is advanced, other who is not advanced, he is envious. This is the difference between spiritual pleasure and material pleasure. It is not difficult to understand. Material pleasure means if you are happy, I become unhappy. If you are unhappy, then I become happy. Uh, this is material pleasure. And spiritual pleasure means by seeing, seeing your happiness, I become happy. By seeing, but there is no distress in the spiritual world. Simply by seeing the happiness of other devotees, another devotee becomes happier. Pure devotional service is rarely achieved. That is the criteria. Uh, pure devotional service has got so many advantages, but it is very difficult. Uh, it is very difficult. Uh, now, janma koti sukriti bhi na labhati. Pure devotional service. Even after endeavoring for millions and millions of births, it is very difficult to achieve. Uh, Pure devotional service can be achieved only through the mercy of a pure devotee. Otherwise, it is not possible. Uh, Mahiyasāṅga-pādura-yogi-sekhaṁ javad naishāṅga-matistāvaturukramāṅg-bhīṁ Prishatta, what is that? Uh, the purpose is that unless one takes the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, it is not possible to become a pure devotee. Mahiya sang padaraja. Mahiya sang, great personality, great devotee, padaraja, means the dust of the lotus feet, avishekam, taken to the, on, on the head. Mahiya sang padaraja avishekam. Uh, niskinchana. Mahiya sang, great personality means niskinchan. Bhagavad Bhakta is niskinchan. He has no more material obligation. That is Bhagavad Bhakta. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Niskin, niskin, Bhagavad, niskinchana sa Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukas. 
भगवत भजन उन्मुख मिस निष्किंच नो मेटेरियल ऑब्लिगेशन नो मेटेरियल ड्यूटी नायक रिनी न किंग कर राजन सरमात्मना जी शरण शरणम गतो मुकुंद एनी वन हु हैज कंप्लीटली टेकन सेल्टर ऑफ द लोटस फीट ऑफ कृष्ण शरणम शरण्यम गतो मुकुंद परिहित कर्त गिविंग आप ऑल आर द डिट्स तक्वा सधर्मम चरणाम भुजम हरे इफ वन टेक्स सेल्टर ऑफ कृष्ण ऑफ लोटस फीट Giving up all other duties. There are so many duties. You have got duty towards your family, towards your uh, kinsmen, towards your country, towards the animals, uh, other living entities. You have uh, obligation to the demigods, uh, the great saintly persons, rishis. You are reading uh, Vedas. Uh, but it is given by Vyas there, so we are indebted to him. Similarly, many other shastras we read, uh, so we are indebted. Devarshi, Rishi, Devata, the demigods, we are taking sun sign. We are obliged to sun god. We are taking moon sign. We are obliged to moon sign, uh, moon god, the air god, Varuna. Uh, everyone, they are helping us. We cannot do without this. You cannot live without water. You cannot live without light. Uh, you cannot uh, live without heat. So we supply. Of course, Krishna is supplying, but we cannot see Krishna directly. They are being supplied by different demigods. Therefore, Deva Jagga is recommended. Deva Jagga means ultimately to satisfy Krishna. So these are the processes. But if one takes to Krishna consciousness, he has no more obligation to all these devatas. Devarsi, Bhutatva, Ninang, Pitrina. We have got so many obligations. But if you take to Krishna consciousness, everyone will be pleased and you haven't got to oblige them by your service to them. Otherwise, you are bound to give them uh, obeisances for their uh, beneficial contribution. Uh, so, devotional service uh, uh, is really achieved. Uh, really achieved means if you achieve, then you become free from all obligations. Not janna koti bhi supriti bhi. तत्र लौडलम में का मुल्लम न लंबते जब जन्म कोटि भी सुकृति कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस कैन बी अचीव सिंपली बाय योर इंटेंस डिजायर दैट दिस लाइफ आई सर ट्राई टू अचीव फेवर ऑफ कृष्ण कृष्ण विल हेल्प यू तीसाम सतुक्तान भजतांग प्रीति भूत बाब बुद्धि जोगम ददामित If you are actually seriously engaged in Krishna consciousness, then Krishna gives us intelligence how to approach Him. So pure devotion and service is really achieved, but by chance, Guru Krishna ki paay paay bhakti lagani. If we somehow or other come in contact with one of my Guru and Krishna. Uh, Krishna is already there. We are already in touch, and if we are serious, then by grace of Krishna we get niskinchan, devotee, and by His grace we achieve to the platform of devotion and service. Uh, otherwise, it is very difficult. Not by executing karma, jnana, yoga, no, bhakta nama vijana. Simply, you have to take pure devotion and service. Uh, Therefore, it is very difficult. People do not wish to come to the pure devotional service. They want hajpats, uh, something this, something that, something that. No, sarva dharma paritta jamaam. That is the beginning of pure devotional service. 
No other engagement, simply Krishna. Uh, that is pure Sri Krishna. But that is very difficult to achieve. People will not accept the simple thing. You give them big, big formulas, uh, yoga system, ashtanga yoga, uh, they will like it. Uh, it is something. Uh, just like uh, it, a homeopathic medicine, because it has no taste, there is no trouble to drink, people do not believe in it. But if you give them some very bitter, pungent medicine, ah, it is some. Similarly, if you give the simple process, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Iva Kivalam, Kalo Nasti, Vanasti, Vanasti, Vagatadandatha, they would not take it very seriously. Or simply by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, one will be liberated and he'll go to back. This is exaggeration, they will say. Uh, but if you give them some difficult job, that you press your nose in this way, you make your head downwards and you exercise in this way and do it, they will think, yes, it is so. Uh, so uh, uh, things are very easy and one can achieve very easily, but they are reluctant to take the easiest process, given by Krishna, given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna is giving the easiest process that you surrender unto me, I give you all possible help. We are not prepared to do that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that you simply chant Hare Krishna, you will achieve the highest perfection. Not we are prepared. Uh, therefore it is said, pure devotional service is really achieved. Uh, people will not accept the simple thing. Uh, they want to uh, make something uh, very difficult. Uh, then it is all. Those in pure devotional service deride even the conception of liberation. Yes. Mukti mukulitanjali sevati asma. A devotee does not care for mukti. Mukti, why they will care for mukti? As soon as he is a pure devotee, mukti is on his leg. Uh, why he should try for mukti? Uh, Billamangal Thakur says, mukti mukulita anjali sevati asma. There is no need of separate endeavor for getting liberation. Uh, it is already there. Mukti mukulitanjali sevati asman dharmartha kama moksha uh, samaya pratiksha. Uh, so don't try it. This is what mean? No. Yeah. So pure devotional sari is the only means to attract. Uh, uh, those in pure devotional sari derive even the conception of devotion. Uh, mukti, uh, Prabhupada Saraswati, Koivalla. Mukti is another name, is Koivalla. Uh, everything is one. Uh, one knowledge, that's all. So, Prabhupada Saraswati says, Koivalla Narokaya. This conception of liberation, that I have become one with the Supreme, it is to a devotee just like hell. Koivalla uh, Narokaya. They do not give very much value to such conception, to become one with the Supreme, or liberation, mukti. Uh, and uh, this is moksha uh, kāmi, those who are aspiring after nibhid brahmāna sandha, without any defense, with the supreme brahmā. That is called mukti, liberation. And tidasa pura ākāsa puspāyate. And the kurmīs, they are aspiring after heavenly planets. Tidasa pura. Tidasa means thirty. Uh, so 
than more than thirty millions of demigods in different planetary systems. They are called heavenly planets. So they are akasha puspa. Akasha puspa means a flower does not grow in the sky. It is something imaginary, phantasmagory. Vidasa pura akasha puspa. So gormis are interested in the akasha puspa heavenly planet. And the gyanis are interested in mukti, karmi gyani. And yogis are interested how to control the senses. Uh, so, uh, this, um, Prabhupada Saraswati um, Maharaj says that duddhanta indriya kala sarpa patali prutkhata dhanastra. The uh, Senses are our enemies. That's all right. We also admit. The yogis try to control the senses and mind because they think of the senses just like serpent. Serpent little touch by the uh, leaf, I mean the tongue. Immediately it causes death. So it is very dangerous. But Prabhupada Saraswati says, that we are not afraid of the serpents because prutkhata dhanstrayate. The serpent is so long dangerous as long as it has got the poison teeth. Poison teeth. Prutkhata dhanstrayate. See, if you take away the poison teeth, then have a big serpent teeth maybe. Nobody will be afraid. Uh, in the Bengal it is said, Vishnai Kulapana Chakra. Uh, if a serpent is known that his poison teeth has been taken away, so his big hood, fast, fast, nobody will be afraid. One who knows that he has no poison teeth. A child may be afraid, but anyone knows. So for a devotee, the senses are there, but it is not like serpent. The dangerous point of sense for sense gratification that is taken up. That poison teeth is taken up. So therefore, a devotee is not afraid of the senses. They can easily handle the senses because the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, which means the poison teeth of the serpent of sense is taken up. Dhrdhānta indriya kāla sattva patali pratkhāta dhāṁstā. So, pure devotional side here. In this way, the point is that pure devotee does not give very much value to so-called liberation. Because so-called liberation, so-called, it is in this sense that we have seen many so-called liberated person, vimukta uh, manina. Uh, they consider the vimukta manina. Now you will be pleased to hear that one of the Mahavadi sannyasi in India, very well known, his disciples came to me to invite me uh, because they are now seeing that then Mayabad philosophy has not been so much effective uh, as devotional service, practical. Uh, so uh, they are now taking gradually to devotional service. They are trying to read Bhagavat, although they are habituated to malinterpret. But they have no other, they have finished their job. Uh, now they are gradually coming to bhakti marga. Uh, that is natural, if one is actually sincere. Uh, after suffering the distress of impersonalism, gradually they will come to surrender to the person. Bhavnam janvanam ante jnanavan maang prabhadvata. Uh, so when one becomes devotee, gainis, they give too much value to liberation, moksha, Nidved Brahmanu Sandha. But yogis, they give too much value for controlling the senses. Karmis, they give too much value 
go to the acts of promotion to the heavenly planet. But uh, for a devotee, these things are very teeny. They don't care for this. Neither for the karmis or for the jainis or for the yogis. Uh, there, jangalabdhya chaparang labhag mannate nadhikang tataha. A bhakta who has come to Krishna consciousness, pure devotional service, he has no more any desire for the result and action of karmis, jainis and yogis. Uh, he is so fixed up. There are many examples, just like Dhruva Maharaj. Uh, here, when he was offered anything he, want, he wanted, uh, actually he wanted the kingdom of his father, uh, but when he actually de- became fixed up in devotional service, he said, Sāmi inkitārtho śmī varaṅna jāj. I am no more. To ask anything, material benediction, varo, no, I don't want. Uh, so Krishna consciousness is so nice that automatically he <coughs> one feels fulfillment of all desires. Therefore, uh, what they will desire for liberation, for mukti, it is most insignificant. Uh, the next is pure devotion and service is the only means to attract Krishna. Uh, you cannot attract Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead with full opulences. See, you cannot attract Krishna by your richness, by your reputation, by your education, by your beauty, or by your strength, or renunciation. No. You cannot attract Krishna by all these things because He is already full. Uh, uh, you cannot attract by anything, any opulence, Krishna, because he is Atmaram. Uh, but if you offer something to Krishna, it is for your benefit. Uh, the example is given uh, just like if the original uh, person is decorated in the mirror, the Reflection of the person is also decorated. Similarly, if you decorate the deity uh, gorgeously, uh, you will feel happy. Krishna has many devotees or many things for being decorated. But if you in the temple, if you offer Krishna all nice things, uh, all nice flowers, all nice dress, all nice food, uh, everything online, then you will feel happy. That is your interest. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, pure devotional service is the only means for attract Krishna. Uh, attract Krishna, Krishna will be happy in this way that you are doing so much for Krishna. Krishna has everything. Uh, but your devotional service, that sincerity of purpose, will attract. My Guru Maharaj used to say that do not try to see Krishna. Render your service in such a nice way that let Krishna see you. Uh, when Krishna sees you, then your mission is perfect. Uh, we cannot see Atasya Krishna Navadi Navavit Gaya Indriyai. We cannot perceive Krishna by our senses. But when our senses are engaged in satisfying Krishna, then Krishna sees us. Swami was Purata. And when Krishna sees us, then our life is success. And how Krishna can see us? Simply by our devotion. Otherwise, you cannot satisfy Krishna by opulence, by education, by scholarship, by beauty, by riches. No. These things Krishna has uh, all perfectly. He is full with all these opulences. Bhaktya Mahavijana. If you want to attract Krishna, then be engaged in pure devotional service. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, relief from material distress. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that one should surrender unto Him 
giving up all other engagements. The Lord also gives his word there that he will protect such surrendered souls from the reactions of all sinful activities. Srila Rupa Goswami says that the distresses from sinful activities are due both to the sins themselves and to sins committed in our past lives. Now, relief from material distress. There are two kinds of activities, pious activities and impious activities. Generally we understand by performing impious activities we suffer and by performing pious activities we enjoy. Uh, but actually, uh, in the material world, uh, there is no enjoyment. Uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains that Dvaitya Bhadra Bhadra Sakali Shama. In the material world, in the world of duality, uh, either we think this is pious or either we think this is impious. They are practically on the same platform. We take it uh, as pleasure. Just like several times I have explained, uh, people here in this material world, they are working very hard all day and night and uh, when they gain some material profit after working so hard, they think that this is profit, this is happiness. Actually, where is the happiness? If one is working very hard, where is the happiness? This is called illusion. In the Shastra it is said, generally people in this material world, they are uh, uh, 